Hello, everyone. My name is Steve Stodolsky. I'm the Liquid Platform Manager at Galvanic Applied Sciences. Today, we have an applications training for the chloralkali industry, specifically for the brine purification stage. We will introduce the process, review the operational challenges, and present our recommended solutions. The chlor alkali industry uses an industrial process for the electrolysis of sodium chloride solutions. This technology is used to produce chlorine, sodium hydroxide, and hydrogen. These products are then supplied downstream for the production of EDC, VCM, and PBC. While there are several chloralkali methods, the most common one is the membrane cell process. Here we have an overview of the chemistry occurring within the membrane cell. Saturated brine enters the first chamber where chloride ions are oxidized to the anode and becomes chlorine gas. At the cathode, positive hydrogen ions are produced to hydrogen gas releasing hydroxide ions into the solution. The membrane at the center of the cell allows the sodium ions to pass to the second chamber. Here they react with the hydroxide ions to produce sodium hydroxide. The sodium chloride brine goes through several purification stages before it reaches the membrane cell. First, the brine is prepared by taking solid salt and dissolving it with water and depleted brine. This creates saturated brine, around 31% sodium chloride. Once saturated, the brine goes through primary purification steps to remove impurities. Sodium hydroxide and sodium carbonate are added to precipitate out calcium and magnesium hardness. Metal impurities such as iron, nickel, and chromium may also precipitate out. The precipitated impurities are removed using sedimentation, filtration and clarification. This reduces hardness down to low ppm levels. Next, the brine receives secondary purification. The first step of secondary purification is polishing filtration, which reduces suspended solids. This protects the ion exchange resin from damage. The ion exchange resin chelating resin treatment reduces hardness down to low ppb levels. This allows the brine to enter the membrane cell without causing any damage. Finally, the purified brine can enter the membrane cell for electrolysis. Brine purification faces several operational challenges. If metals aren't removed, electrolysis is more energy intensive due to less current efficiency. A strict ratio of caustic to carbonate must be maintained during the purification process because magnesium hydroxide only precipitates out efficiently with a higher ratio of calcium to magnesium. Sulfite levels should be strong enough to effectively dechlorinate the brine to less than pH 6. Otherwise, chlorate and bromate can form, which can reduce the caustic strength and damage equipment. Brine purges limit sulfate and chlorate levels in the brine. However, this increases the load to the wastewater treatment plant. Replacing sodium chloride brine is also expensive. Protecting the membrane cell is of utmost importance. However, the saturated brine sample is very difficult to handle when it comes to online monitoring. Cooling hot brine causes scaling in fluidic systems, which increases hands-on maintenance time. How are you currently controlling caustic dosing for optimal precipitation? Are you relying on inline pH sensors or performing a true acid-base titration for tighter control? How are you monitoring low PPB concentrations of hardness? Does your analyzer always detect upsets? Galvanic recommends using online analyzers that can handle difficult brine conditions. Caustic and carbonate can be monitored in the primary purification stage to optimize hardness removal. Turbidity or suspended solids can be monitored in the filter and resin tower outlets to optimize filtration. Total hardness can be monitored in the secondary brine before electrolysis to protect the membrane cell. Other compounds can also be measured if they are known to be an issue in your process. AccuSeries is Galvanic's third generation wet chemistry analyzer. One system can measure both caustic and carbonate following approved ASTM methods. The performance is plus or minus 2% of full scale, which ensures accurate precipitation of impurities. For brine samples, we recommend a special sample conditioning system to cool the sample. This equipment continuously flushes the lines in order to prevent any scaling issues. AccuSeries can also monitor hardness down to two parts per billion. 
We use a colorimetric method with a performance of plus or minus 2% of full scale. This level of sensitivity monitors slow increases of hardness that can damage the electrolyzer. Galvanic's wet chemistry analyzers has been monitoring brine for over 30 years. The robust fluidic system minimizes maintenance to ensure continuous real-time monitoring. Galvanic's Monotech line can also be used to monitor brine for turbidity or suspended solids. We often recommend our acoustic backscatter analyzer for higher suspended solids concentrations. This sensor works in the most difficult conditions without any maintenance required. For lower range applications, we also have optical systems which will provide greater sensitivity. In all cases, the objective is to help eliminate solids in order to maximize the life of the electrolyzer. The purpose of all these online analyzers is to provide measurement certainty by maximizing your uptime. If you have any questions for how you, to optimize your process, please contact Galvanic Sales, myself, or your local representative. Thank you and have a great afternoon.